Hi guys, welcome back. Scanlan here and we're off for more of a hat in time. And the music's normal again because I reloaded my file and we've, well, had the phone call. That phone call has told us that after the last episode where we filmed our final movie with DJ Grooves and claimed, well, two time rift pieces, one for doing the job, one for winning the reward. We also got one in the time rift, but that's neither here nor there. We've been told that it's, there is a bit of a sting up. The rewards have been rigged and there's another timepiece that the winner is hoarding, planning to use its power, which we cannot have. Pretty much the same reason why Moustache Girl wanted the power for herself. So we're not done here just yet. We're going to hop straight back in and heed our warning from what I presume to be the conductor, because he said Lassie, and go back into Deadbird Studio while it's at night. Notice the question mark in the name. That did not sound good and the place is abandoned. Let's get suited up. First of all, I want to go right back into what we were in before. Slide Eye with our new ice hat. We've got the ears for it. It's perfect. So, yeah, there we are. Power slide. So, there's not really anything that we can do in here. I mean, I guess if I really want to, I can... Oh, no, it's not even here! Oh, I guess it's because we're not allowed to build up debt at this point. But at the same time, I would have liked to have my shades on. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> that's a shade. Get it? So we're going to have to go all the way through this area again and find out if there's any other way that we can go. I mean, there's a few places that we haven't actually seen in Dead Bird Studio yet. Remember the purple time rift that we did? Well, there's a lot of areas we haven't been before. Does that kids do do the thing? Actually, the music is still technically playing, so that's fine. This is inoperative because there's no one here. But notice there's a few ponds leading us to jump around. If you've missed a few items on the route, you can get them now. But, yeah, all the cameras are gone. No one's around. We can just waltz right through this place. Can we actually knock down this cactus? Yeah, but because the cameras are inoperative as well, which is good. Like, the security cameras are inoperative as well. It's kind of weird. So, let's keep going through. And, for some reason, the switch is not here anymore. Wow, that's some echo. Maybe we can make a jump? We can do that. Let's come up here. Uh, okay, we've got a bit of a problem here. We can't go any further forward. There's no way we're going to make that jump, even from up here. So, what do we do? Oh boy, I didn't mean to fall! That was my beat. There's a pond up here. Maybe we should follow the ponds? See where it leads us? Nowhere. We can't go onwards. Well, if I actually met... What did I just stand on? <laughs> that caught me off guard. I kind of like landed on one of the struts below, but I don't think I was supposed to. <laughs> That's kind of weird. What I was about to say was, we should follow ponds to see which way we're going to go. And it looks like this elevator is now interactable. We got our new direction. I guess we're going deeper into Dead Bird Studio to places we've never been before. Or have we? Let's write it down, and let's infiltrate some more. We're in the true Act 6. We're in the final part of this level. The final act of this chapter. And then we can close the book, and not have another to be continued, unless, you know, we've got more stuff to do. I'm trying to go for some movie puns, they don't work out very well, are they? This is going on for a while. It'd be nice if we had some elevator music, just saying. We're actually getting to see a lot of stuff that we're passing by. Any time now. There we go. Welcome to the underbelly of Dead Bird Studio. And there are cameras set up everywhere. We can't get caught. Let's walk above. Right, so to start off with, it looks like we're going to have to go up and over. And there's immediately something of it that we can grab, hence that rainbow glow. But if we come down here... Uh, isn't there not something over here I can interact with? I'm pretty sure there was. I thought I could interact with something around here. I'm pretty sure I could. Well, I guess it's not here anymore. That's a shame. I'm pretty sure that there was something I could interact with which said that there's like a bunch of debts to be paid, but... <laughs> doesn't seem to be there, unless it's on this side. I know it's around here somewhere. 
Ah, here it is. This is what I was after. I thought it was on the opposite side. A lot of these look like unpaid bills. Makes sense. You don't really recall seeing any cinemas on this planet, and destroying trains probably gets pricey after a few takes. <laughs> Looks like this is all for the conductor. How many trains has he actually destroyed? Or <laughs> carts for the train. It's his baby, eh? Looks like he's built quite a debt up. So we're going to have to make our way around the long way because all the doors are locked, which is kind of a problem. We've got to jump across all these electrical wires. But there's actually something over here that we can get that's in that room, if we can get through the door. Looks like you're not allowed past this point. Very subtle. Not stopping me, though. I'm a rebel. <laughs> yeah, no flying, no eggs, and no humans allowed. <laughs> well, you're not... That's basically saying no children in their kind of language. Oh, yeah, and no cats allowed either. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't actually seen any cats thus far. Oh, boy. Well, that was a great start. Oh, can I salvage? Nope. And by the way, we've got this music playing again, which is amazing. I love this music that we heard when we were going through this place before. But it does get a bit repetitive after a while, and I'm failing miserably. I'm going to jump down here and grab this harp on before I die. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I'm having a real hard time on snapping onto some of these tight ropes. Especially since it's quite a small hitbox, and yet hat kids jumps are quite floaty. Not as floaty as when we were on the moon set with DJ Grooves in his two levels, but when filming his movies, and I don't really want to grab those, that's kind of a problem. Do I have this on still? Yes, I do. I want to hook shot up here and jump into this pipe. Aha! Break into this room through the fan, and a Rift token is just sitting right here. That's six that we have in our bag right now, so that's two rolls we can have in the Rift Roulette. And that should be our eight. No, our 21st, excuse me. I had to look at my notes there just to make sure. Kind of lost count. Obviously, in editing, it's a lot easier to keep count, but I just thought I'll have, quick, have a quick glance and have the graphic on screen a little bit longer. Right, so... A bit more platform to do here. I don't know why I tried to avoid that one. Heart pawn. I... Well, at least I spawned on a heart pawn. <laughs> that kind of remedies the situation. <laughs> That's one hell of a spawn point. Hey, you can avoid out. They have a heart! <laughs> Literally, in that case. Some of these I can't actually avoid, especially with the magnet badge, but most of the time that's not really an issue. Oh, maybe we should not heed his warnings. He's clearly calling us out. <laughs> so he has seen us try to get through here, and he's trying to stop us. But it's not going to happen, buddy. To be honest, I can't actually hit... How did I bonk there? <laughs> Things are happening. <laughs> I want to come over here to this square vent, because there's an ice yarn just sitting right over here. Just chilling. Funny how it's on a vent, considering that's supposed to keep air conditioning, which is cold. Or warm, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, just sitting on top of it. Maybe you should have been inside. That's another yarn. We're getting quite up there right now. We're like over 60 yarn, it's kind of crazy. And remember, there's only 88, so we're actually more than halfway done without collecting items. Like I said, you don't need to collect them all, and you could just collect that one respawning dweller yarn in the middle of those rocks in, um, in Subcom Forest, but it'd be nice if there was a first-person mode, to be perfectly honest, because I can't turn the camera at all right now, so I'm just going to have to follow these... I bonked! I couldn't double jump! That wouldn't have happened if I could have turned the camera there. The camera, for the most part, is good. It's just like for the 15% of the time that you're in tight areas is when it's a real big pain, and... That was weird. I could not grab the ledge there. Yeah, tell me though that this hat looks a lot more like Sly Cooper than the ice hat that now takes die changes. I keep bonking on that one. I got to jump earlier. There we are. That's what was messing me up. This white post right up here, which, by the way, seems to have another item up there. And there's footprints on this panel, so we'll use that to get some height. Veer off. Oh, whoa, okay. I did not mean to grab the, <laughs> the little pipe over there. But brewing yarn right next to this little alcove that looks like it has an explosive sign. Again, quite subtle. What does it actually say? Common occurrence. Explosions are a common occurrence in this place? <laughs> well, I guess if you're going to be blowing up trains all the time, that might be why. Or then again, uh, shooting off fireworks. <laughs> I have to make it to apply to both. Can't have favouritism. Even though we've technically done that because one person's one, but sometimes it's out of our control. So hopefully you have the hookshot badge equipped because now you kind of actually need it to get across this chasm. Otherwise you're going back to the beginning or you're going to void out. There we are. Got a bunch of old reels here. 
These shelves are full of movies you never heard of. The amount of bird puns in their titles is staggering. <laughs> You're not gonna read any of them out for us though, are you? Would be nice. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because he flew the coop. <laughs> I don't know. That was a terrible one. But hey, this room looks familiar. It's not exactly the same, but yeah, this is the storage room, the prop storage. We were in here before in the, in the time rift, so this is where we were having some foreshadowing. Quite early on, in fact. The label reads, John Bar Hinges. We can s all you can see through the cracks is a magnet and a pebble one. Maybe someone was living in there? I mean, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's actually got like a snatcher stamp. Even when we're not in the forest, he seems to be following us everywhere we go. He's making sure that we go through our contracts, but right now we're busy. And when you're busy, when you're a star such as we are, <laughs> kind of takes priority over our own soul. The label reads MacGuffins. Nice. By the way, I like this little wavy uh, fire prop. Kind of cool. But, well, more like it'll be lit. The label reads Chekhov's Guns. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of these props around here. Let's come back over this way. So we read this one. Nothing over there. We can platform up this way if we want to, but I'm going to squeeze through here for a second. Go up this way. And there's something behind here. It's a sprint yarn. Not really helpful in this, in this tightly contained area, but, you know, it's there, I guess. Well, I don't have an explanation for why every single yarn is what it is, okay? they, they got to fill up the spot somehow, and you got to, like, have multiple yarn in order to make the later hats. <laughs> and the last hat, we still haven't made a hat yet, is <laughs> quite staggering on how many it needs. But I'm not going to tell you anything else about that right now, because you'd think that, you know, we'd be getting a new hat almost every level, effectively. Except for the first level, where we got two on top of our original. I'll just take it down here. Oh, that's Chekhov's guns again. Okay. I think we're done down here. It get You get turned around quite a bit around here, but... I think we're actually done down here, so we should follow the ponds around, but I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything at all. Because there's like two boxes I kind of need to jump in between, and I'm just trying to make sure I know where they are. It's probably up here now I think about it, because we'll jump off this Hessian sack. There we are. Here we are. Up here. Yeah, up here. Here we are. In between two stacks of boxes. Jump over here. Jump it! Can't really see because the camera kept zooming in on us, but another sprint yarn right there. Yeah, definitely not really useful unless you want to make some long jumps without double jump and lunging. I guess. Because you can just do an instant start and jump. Alright, so... <laughs> Conductor! There we are, the camera actually zoomed out for us. So yeah, this area doesn't really take us anywhere, it's just kind of... Here. Looks like I just saw another shiny up there. Items! And that's the window that we were at before. Hmm... Looks like we're going to have to make our way up. So let's... No, that's the dead end. I got myself turned around, excuse me. Oh boy, the camera... Oh, I'm actually stuck. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> I actually got stuck there for a moment, but... Yeah, this is not where we want to be. That is like a little self-contained dead end, I think. Yeah, it is. The label reads red herrings. The box reeks. <laughs> Are they actually herrings in there? <laughs> oh boy. Sounds like a murder job as well now. <laughs> what is this, a redux of... Murder on the Owl Express is this murder in Dead Bird Studio. <laughs> What's going on? Things are happening. That seems to be happening a lot. Right, so let's come back over this way because we can actually follow these ponds upwards. This is where we need to go. Spent quite a bit of time down here, but we wanted to read all the props. I should have had the no bonk badge. That would actually be quite helpful. But at the same time, we're going we're scaling a very high area, so having the no uh, having the hover badge would actually be pretty good right now as well. I just need to make sure I jump a little earlier, so I grab the ledge or walk up. Because that's the, that's the thing about the no bonk badge, it just immediately segues it if you make collision, you don't fall off instead. So... Oh, I did not see that there for some reason, I blanked out. At least we don't get fined this time. Looks like there's a bunch of wires over there, I think we might have to actually make our way over that way, so let's go do that. Yeah. We are. We were actually right below this a second ago. I just got clipped. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> but yeah, another sprint yarn out of nowhere where we can't actually use it. And by the way, I never actually mentioned it, but when those uh, when the electricity's go through these wires, or if you're standing on them, you can hear chattering. Don't know what that's about. Maybe they're ch uh, like phone lines instead of electrical wires, but... I don't know. I wanted to head back because that was pretty much a dead end. We actually need to go down this way. 
And I'm gonna grab that because I kinda need it. Can I get any higher from here? I don't think I can. Nope, that is later on. Because we still need to scale upwards. So let's jump down here. There we are. Jump on this bag. Well, it's more of bird seed than anything else. Bunch of ponds, loads of money here. If the camera would like to zoom out, that would be most welcome. There we go. Now I can actually see what I'm doing and grab all the ponds before time runs out. Nailed it. Don't get any prize for it, we just get a ton of money. And we always need the money for the badges that we need. And I still need that one hit hero badge at the moment for that achievement later on. That's not going to come to way later, so that's fine. I do plan on getting the achievement, but that'll be later on. For now? Oh, stop climbing on walls. <laughs> Don't want to do that just yet. In fact, hang on. Which way do I want to go? Can't go up that way because they're blocking it off. We can climb up here, I think. Yeah, but I don't think there's anywhere we can go from here because the lights are in the way. Would think that we could just go straight over unless we could get enough height, but it doesn't look like I'm going to. Standing on them is an instant catch because you actually physically jump off of them. So I don't want to do that. So we can't go that way. Instead, we're going to go this way. Well, that sucked. I actually fell down too far for the thing to work and I voided out. Okay. Maybe I want to make sure it's actually equipped. Sometimes that can happen. I don't know if that was supposed to happen. Maybe I fell too far and that is what happened. Don't know. But I was holding forward. I should have bounced off the bag. Yeah, this time I did. So I shouldn't have voided out there, and I was quiet so we could hear DJ Groups talking. Of course, if in the last episode we had enough points for the conductor, the conductor will be the one talking to us, and the one on the phone will probably be the other dude. But in this case, I can't show both off, and I actually do not plan on showing both versions off. Mainly because that, well, for one thing, it'll make the, the playthrough unique, and you can't exactly copy files about going into the file directory on a computer. I don't know if you can do it on consoles, but... Considering the, the Sealed of the Ill DLC, including one of the scenes that I've shown, actually allows us to deal with both of them at once, there's not really any need, so we'll get to that at that point once we cover the DLC. The label reads Ticking Clocks. You think of one being advanced and shiver. That's... kind of foreshadowing, in a way. Hmm, anyway. We'll kind of a little bit stuck here. I, I think I need to go back a bit, actually. Yeah, over here. We don't actually need to go up that way unless we want to grab that item up there. But what we do want to do is at least come over this way to the end, but we're not done yet because we want to bounce off of that. There we are. Double jump again. Come up this way. Hop up here. Got a little spaceship prop here that <laughs> I don't think we've actually seen. <laughs> and we get yet another ice yarn just hanging up up here. Get it hanging because it's yarn. I thought I'd go with something different than an ice joke. And I think that's it for this room. Yeah, kind of massively compact. I just noticed there's a DJ Grooves cutout over there. I haven't seen a conductor cutout, though. Do they change if we go for the other character? Because I, I don't normally go against the conductor. I normally have DJ Grooves to go for. Because that's who won. And that's apparently who's doing this sting operation. So, if you can even call it that. If that's the right terminology. I don't think there's actually any collectibles in here, but if you remember, this area also looks similar to one of the floors that we went through in the uh, Purple Time Rift. And just like that, that one time, we have to... I timed that wrong. We have to hit the switches in order to get through. I actually kind of need some health. I'm taking quite a bit of silly, stupid damage. <laughs> kind of bad, and I almost jumped into that. I was not at the right angle. Right, maybe I, maybe it's not as tight as I think it is. Maybe I just have to be a little bit more patient. There we are. Yeah, there was way more leeway than I thought. For some reason, we can't seem to wall run up this girder, even though we are clearly touching it. But what I like to do is do this. Instead of hopping onto that tightrope and then climbing up, because that's a lot easier and you, you don't risk falling down or getting hit by electricity. Don't jump for that pond. I'm going to jump up here first. This studio light doesn't do anything, so we can hop down here and grab that heart pond. I really need it. Penguins, we're back to the patrols again. So we're going to sneak past them. You know what would be very nice? Metal Gear Solid, like, khaki colour that we could have. That'd be nice. Can I come up this way? Yep, there's a switch here. Alright, so that's for one switch right now. And then we can just hop straight down onto this one, instead of making our way backwards. Definitely the best route to take. Minimises backtracking. Come over here, we've got some platforms to jump on that are going to fall. These are effectively the, the real world equivalents of the cookies now I think about it. 
But now that we've acted every single one, we just drop all the way down in the middle. There we are. I did not actually think I could jump out of the hover badge uh, hover, but I just did. So that's cool. And we go onwards. And I don't think you can go back from here. No, you can't. It's a solid wall. Oh, and look where we are. <laughs> it's literally the exact same area yet again. Told you it was foreshadowing. Let's climb up here. There we are. Get grab a bunch more money. But this time the, the window is not broken. It's repaired now. Because remember, that is the past and this is the present. I don't need that hot pot right now. I'm actually maxed out, which is a good thing. Instead, we want to come through here. Now, if you don't want to miss out on an item that's actually quite cheap on how it's executed, you want to pay attention to what I'm going to be doing. So, first of all, I want to look for a door that I can walk into. Don't think I'm going to find one down here. I think it's a little bit onwards. Yeah, it's a bit onwards. So let's come over this way, dodge all the cameras. Down here, follow the ponds. Yeah, here we are. This is the room. Welcome to the dress room, which I also like to call the poster room because there's a bunch of posters. The big parade. That's the poster for that movie. Jumping along the walls and everything. We, ne we never actually go through the streets. And to be honest, this is kind of a bland um, portrait. I kind of like the artwork better that's used for the loading screen. Which is actually kind of used for some of the movies as well. Funky. Dead Bird Studios production directed by G.J. Groove. So that's the cardboard cutout we saw earlier. There's our image looking all cute. Picture perfect. Starring some girl. You could ask for my name so you credit me properly. Notice that we have a picture in our hands. That's adorable. Can we actually check it? No, we can't. I know there's a few others that we can check later on. But there's actually a door up there. That door is easily missable because really this is just a pass-through to go to the other hallway. You want to come up here. Because it kind of reveals something really shady. Look at all these uh, tabloids. Calculated risk goes horribly wrong. The early worm. I get it, but bird get, early bird gets the worm. Local bird misses the only train in existence. Conductor spotted laughing. That's just rude because that's his own thing. So that doesn't paint him a good light. And look at how many trophies are in this room. He's got a bed that is surrounded by them. He's got literally stacks upon stacks and a bloody tower that holds a key. Clearly this key has some significance. Whose room is this? Don't think it's actually said. And why would you have your own bedroom in the studio? That must bump up the rent considerably. 42 year long streak broken. Considering all these tabloids seem to be related to the um, conductor, all these headlines, as well as all the, like, all the uh, explosions, the birds, the train itself, it must be the conductor's room. I think we made the I think we made the right decision on letting Dio Grooves win, but we still need to get that uh, timepiece back. Wait, I didn't read that one. Two birds disturbing the peace in an all-out bird brawl and the bomb workshop. So yeah, he's dealing with our with our business as well. I think we're going to ignore him for now because he keeps cutting me off <laughs> and we're not really in good books with him right now. We don't want to go that way, that's the way to continue onwards. Instead we want to go through here. We're in a bit of a green screen party area which is probably where he filmed Funky. Wanna, excuse me, hop on this box. Ah, camera please! Oh my lord. Wait, did that sparkle when I jumped off of it? it looked like it did. I'm going to hop onto this rocket ship here which is like a 3D cardboard cutout. <laughs> very subtle. And on top of these beams is another sprint yarn. We just seem to be finding these sprint yarns all over the place. And because we got a key, we're just holding it on our wrist like a watch. <laughs> well, we are supposed to have the key right now, so I don't know what they expect me to do there. Maybe they need to fix that. Maybe have it, have the key in Hack Kid's other hand, but then you attack with it, so I don't know. Can we actually get up here? I mean, there are ponds up there. Oh yeah, we go from the beginning, don't we? No, we got up there later, because we're actually done down here, I believe so. So we want to go through this room. Dodge this camera, very easily and simple. Another hallway to go through. Another door to go through, it seems. That door has nothing in it. It's kind of blocked up, actually. You see another room behind these doors. But most of these doors don't actually seem to have anything behind them, because we can't go through them, so it's pointless. Whoa! Hat Kid smells. Moustache Girl was here. Looks like she's already got a few timepieces and is bragging about it. Very subtle. 
Looks like we're gonna have to deal with her later. Looks like she's becoming a bigger threat. But, we don't know where she is right now, but we do know where DJ Grooves is. So we gotta get to him and stop him from using this one timepiece. Compared to all the ones that Mustache Girl has, because we don't know her location. And this is the second poster room, which you cannot miss. I mean, that one was actually used as the loading screen. This one's actually different to what we actually saw, which is what I used for the, uh thumbnail of that episode and once again a movie that we didn't actually experience on the science express yeah, that's kind of redundant isn't it once upon a time on the science express murder on the owl express yeah not a lot of creativity it's always on the train these posters came out pretty great though it occurs to you you never gave them permission to use your image in marketing actually you don't recall signing a contract for anything here or even giving them any of your details it's possible you aren't getting paid for these movies. I like how the camera just zooms in from where you're standing, like you're talking to some NPC, just making you realise you're not getting paid for any of this. You're being exploited. And I think that just homes in on the fact that we need to go kick their butts. If we weren't going to do it because they were abusing our timepieces that belong to us and they should be messing with the time stream, now it is personal. <laughs> if it wasn't already. So we're going to jump through here. We've done this jump before, if you haven't already, you know, done it in some, uh, time rifts. Jump beforehand, because if you don't, if I can tilt the camera, which I can't seem to do so. That's a bottomless pit. Yeah, that's not really safe in a studio, is it? But yeah, we pretty much cleared pretty much everything here. So, just hop down this vent. And do not go through there if you're holding the key. Turn the camera around 180. Very sneaky. What's hidden but a little prezzy for you? A relic. Well, if token for me, could be different for you. You need that key in the reward room, and if you didn't look up to see it or even notice that panel that you can will run up, you would miss this because that's the only way to get this. You need that key. All right, and with that, clearly no one wants us in here. And mostly it says no humans allowed and restricted access to no kids with a hat. Well, good sir. That ain't stopping me unless you have some guards. Let's get on with this. That loading screen changes depending on who you're going to face. I'll show it up on screen right now as we write this down. Alright, DJ Grooves, you have some explaining to do. Look who we've got here, darling. I guess you found my little secret, huh? Yeah, I've been tipped off. This last timepiece is all for me, darling. If you want it. Well, I guess you've just gotta come and get it. Actually, I expect that to be returned to me as it belongs to me, as well as compensation for not being paid for any of this. But he's not having none of it. Welcome to DJ Grooves or the conductor if you made him win. The boss battle for both of them is pretty much exactly the same. So what I'm doing here, only the set pieces and the battle arena's design itself is what will be different. But of course, we're covering DJ Grooves for this Let's Play. Because he's the easiest to actually get stuff with. And this is the whole point of the walkthrough. To make things as easy as possible for, for us all. Yeah, he can make those shock waves that will knock you down. And you pretty much have to hit him at every given opportunity. He doesn't seem to glow blue all the time. All you gotta do is just whack him. But then again, he himself is blue. So maybe that's the rule. And the more damage that you do, the more that the audience will reward you with health, depending on how much trouble you've had before. Which is odd, because the whole audience is, well, penguins, which work for him himself. So that's kind of odd. It'll probably be the hours with DJ Grooves. And... Oh, that he just stabbed us. That's gotta be some sort of lawsuit. Yeah, he wields knives! Here we huh? Oh, he duped me out! He can fake you out by doing that ground pound and... What the hell knocked me back there? That was weird. Yeah, when he's doing that stab, it's just better to home attack him. You can use the brewing hat to hit him as well, or ground pound him yourself with your ice hat. So, let me see if I can do that. There we are! Nailed it with the ice hat. I'm going to keep this on for now because it kind of matches. Yeah, you're not going to get me with your car of tricks, my boy. I've played Undertale. I know all the tricks. And I'm an expert dodger. I say as I've been taking a little bit of damage every so often. Alright, what's happening now? He's not just in the middle. 
He's doing a certain attack. Watch out for the cars. Kind of got locked in there. Oh, he's got doubles. Which is the real one. The final one, of course. Of course he's going to send off the duplicates first. Not as sophisticated for the, uh, you know, Shadow Clones. And I kind of got too wrong on that one, but that's fine. Himuski! Superman there. All right, here we go again. Which one's got... They all went. That just kind of sucks. I need some health here. He's got five shockwaves going off. Yeah, even though they're pa cardboard cutouts... Oh, I just got clipped by one. Even though they're cardboard cutouts, they're kind of devastating. What? I was in midair. How did I stumble? That is jank. And how did I bounce off of him like that? Yeah, so the thing is that the boss battle kind of resets, so when haven't got back to the cut... That was very weird camera angle game, I could not see him. I don't even think it was visible for a moment there. But yeah, let's just listen to this music for a bit while I continue trying to get back to where I was, because that was pretty weird. Okay, so now we're back to the cardboard cutout attacks, which are just as deadly as him, even though they're cardboard cutouts. Yeah, the music sounds quite uh, Monsters Inc. Scare Island for me. It kind of has that nice jazzy feel to it, which also has like a nice romping beat. And funnily enough, um, Monsters Inc. Scare Island on the play on the PS1, PC, or PS2 is like another one of those, well, specifically the PS1 version, which my brother did a full walkthrough with. Actually. I did a glitch that actually went a little bit further. I'll put a link to that in the card above. Um, it's like one of my favourite collectathons, despite being a license to Disney game. And again, I, it looked like I got staggered in mid air. It's very odd. Could use a bit more health here. Actually, can I tank the hits by doing that? Yeah, it looked like I did. Watch out! Nope. Oh, here we go again. Oh, come on! I can't see because the camera's panned up a tad. Oh no, I missed! Oh, I do got him. Okay, I got some health for that. As I said, the health kind of the, like the health rewards that you get for hitting him every time kind of changes depending. Wait, what? Um. Let's have a little heart to heart. Have a seat, darling. I think he got tired of fighting. Plus, how did you appear in the middle of the room? Maybe he's abusing the timepiece already. <laughs> Ever since you arrived on this planet, these time pieces have fallen from the sky. Now, I could understand if you feel they belong to you, darling. I understand. But did you know they allow for rewinding time? With one time piece, I could reclaim all the trophies that belong to me, darling. Every single trophy I've lost to the conductor where he has cheated his way to victory. Okay, I understand where you're coming from, but one, the time pieces are legit mine while I was, you know, getting the, the trophies are more of like, you know, competition. And even if he may have cheated, I don't use the timepieces to change time. I use them for an infinite power source, and I use most most of them at a time to have a better energy output in order to get home. I can't prove it, darling, but I'm certain the conductor has been manipulating everything to make sure I never win. So why am I down here, then? I just need one timepiece to fix years of cheating and fraud. Can't you spare me just one? Darling. Nope, it ruined the space time continuum. Darling, darling, darling. You're so persistently selfish. What? I've brought you to stardom, and all I ask in return is a single time piece, but you won't share. It's too much power, boy. Well, darling, if you want this time piece back so bad, come and get it. Phase two, and we've got a bomb. Oh dear. Ah, uh, I can't use my hat either. Remember this bomb, darling? I stole it from the conductor's movie set, and now 
it'll be your demise. All right, phase two. We've got a time limit. It's the same time limit from when we had to do the the uh, escape from the conductor's thing. And if we do get a game over here, we will restart back at this phase. I'm pretty sure. So my early death was kind of accidental, but I swear I keep getting knocked over even though I was in midair when that shouldn't happen. And he's using Metal Blade. This ain't Mega Man 2, my boy. Back off. We gotta take him out quick. But yeah, no matter what you say during the heart to heart, they will still fight you. Because even if you say maybe, he knows for a fact that you're not gonna let it go without a fight. Even if you do consider it. So the fight will continue regardless. What? Over here! Oh, hang in there! I'll find a way to defuse the bomb! Kind of a bit of a frame rate lag there, but yeah, we're kind of uh, running out of time here. Conductor, you better work on your magic quick. Thank God you've broken in here. Help! Oh, you're trying to do my techniques, are you? Or Sonic techniques, I guess. I mean, he's Mega Man right now, which is also blue, funnily enough. Conductor, help! I'm running out of time! If that time limit goes off, you will die in one hit. So you got to do as much damage as possible. That's the only way to actually progress the fight. I mean, how else are you supposed to progress the fight, to be honest? My diffuser is ready! Come here! All you got to do is walk in front of it, and he will snip it off. Not anymore, it ain't! Oh, and he's getting ready for his finale. Oh, no! Now they're locked onto us. We've got to keep moving in this battle now. And no amount of using the ice hat is going to keep us safe. Also, when you're attacking DJ Grooves, be careful not to have the owls with knives, by the way, to not be in the way when you're trying to actually loop around for an attack, because you might hit them instead, and they're going to hit you back. I need that health. Okay, I got it. Can I hit him? There we are. Just barely got it. And I bounced off him again. That's fair! I was in the middle of an attack, and I got bounced off, got stunned, and then they hit me. I should have had invincibility frames there. Oh, boy. Oh, I still got hit by the shockwave. That sucks. That, what, seriously? How did he hit me there? I was nowhere near him. Take that, you cheating penguin. I knew there was something shady about you, and I'm not talking about the tallest penguin in all the land. And for some reason, he's still locked onto me. I don't think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> what was with the jank in this episode? I have no idea, but... With our final timepiece, we're not even going to say goodbye. We are done. In the next episode, guys, we're going back to get our soul back. We need everything that we are owed. Here we go. Oh, no. Yeah!